All right, Jesse. So when your skin's inflamed, you whip out the bar of soap you used to wash your ass with. That's your, that's your solution? Hey guys, so today's video is gonna be one where I roast the absolute shit out of my old skincare routine. There are so many things that I feel like I could roast about this channel, but honestly, I feel like YouTubers in general, everyone kind of feels that way. Like when you're first starting out a channel, it just sucks. Like that's just always the truth. As time goes on, you get more comfortable, you understand what background you want, things like that. Skincare has been something that for a very long time I have had pretty much no clue about. <laughs> like I just, it's never interested me to learn about skincare. I've had acne since I was 18 years old and I struggled a lot with that, but I still never gave a shit about skincare. Like I would just try products here and there. It just, it seems really complicated, not gonna lie. Once you start talking about ABH or BH or whatever the fuck, you know what I'm talking about. My mind wanders elsewhere. However, now we're in a time where there's YouTubers like Skincare by Hiram, who I love and I watch religiously, who just tell you what to use and why they think you should use it. And honestly, that has stepped my skincare game up big time and it has made me feel very ashamed very ashamed of my skincare past. The other day I remembered that in the past I had a skincare video up and I mean, it wasn't even that far in the past. I think it was like two or three years ago. I just had the random urge to go and look at that video and I started to watch it and I cringed so hard at the products that I was recommending that I was like, ma'am, you must make a video on this. So that is what we're doing today. I'm gonna react to the video, but then I'm also gonna give you my new skincare routine and tell you why I like these products and why I feel like they work a lot better for me. I know that in that video, I said I'm not a dermatologist and these are just products that worked for me, but I know somebody out there has had to have tried the things that I recommended. Um, and if they ruined your skin, you may be entitled to financial compensation. No, but really, um, I am so sorry. I was coming from a good place. And at the time, I really did think those products were helping my skin. At least it wasn't St. Ives apricot scrub. Okay, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> Let's get into it. Let me react. I hate watching videos with my blonde hair. I know some people say, Jesse, your blonde hair, we miss it. Why? It looks like a freaking banana and nobody told me. Big friends. By the way, I know I have a full face of makeup on right now because I am gonna film a main channel video after this, so I figured I'd do them back to back. But at some point in this video, I will put video in the natural sunlight of my skin so you guys can get a better grasp of what it's looking like. Anyway, that's not important, but I just wanted to say that. Oh God, it has almost 100,000 views. I'm gonna private this video before you see this one. That is for sure. All right. <laughs> Let's go. Hey guys, I obviously have no makeup on because what's the point in filming a skincare video with makeup on? But basically I asked you guys on Twitter what video you wanted to see first. I'm gonna skip forward because the majority of the beginning of the video is me talking about my skincare journey, which I still stand by. Like, you know, obviously it's just my journey. So I'm not gonna talk about that part. I'm gonna skip right to when I start recommending products. When I was pregnant, I would wash my body with body wash like I had always done. And for some reason when I was pregnant, my hoo-ha Oh, you see, I told you this was gonna be TMI. My hoo-ha would get irritated with my body wash, which I shouldn't have been washing it with body wash anyway. I mean, it's like a gentle little flower. Like, why are you putting fucking perfume on that shit? But whatever, it started getting irritated, so I needed to switch soaps. <laughs> so I basically got a soap exclusively for my hoo-ha. I hate that I ever said a hoo-ha. Like, vagina, Jesse. Vagina's not a bad word. Vagina's just what you have. And that was this soap right here, the Dove Sensitive Skin Beauty Bar. This is just a bar soap, unscented. It's just a fucking plain ass bar of soap. I basically get like a pack of, I think it's like 10 of these. Maybe it's not the best sign if you can find 10 of your face washes for like $7. Price does not always equal quality. That is for sure. I have some really, really affordable things that I'm gonna show you in this video, but 10, Bars of soap for like seven bucks. Girl, you gotta question it. You gotta think twice on that one. I just wish Jesse would have used some context clues. However, let's move on. I seriously fucking swear by this shit. Now, I know a lot of people might get a little weirded out because it's a bar of soap. You know, it sits there, it might collect bacteria. I suggest you get like a special little situation, a little setup for your bar of soap. But if it freaks you out that much, I'm pretty sure the liquid version of this sensitive skin beauty bar is the same thing. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure you can use the liquid. Oh yeah. <laughs> let's just tell people to use body wash on their face, Jesse. Good job. I started noticing a big difference in my skin when I started using this. And it wasn't until then that I realized that every single fucking face wash on this planet breaks me out. Every single one. I mean, it doesn't matter the fucking brand. It doesn't matter what it claims to do. Like every face wash I use breaks me out. Except that's not true. Okay. So face wash. Not every face wash breaks me out. Every face wash with artificial 
fragrances breaks me out. I never knew that because I honestly never paid attention to fragrance at all. I guess because it's so normalized in makeup, like it never even struck me as odd when I would wash my face with something that had an intense, like perfumed fragrance. And therefore almost all of my skincare had fragrance in it. And I didn't realize that my skin was sensitive to the fragrance, not to the face wash necessarily itself. And so the whole bar of soap thing, basically the reason why that came about is because that bar of soap was unscented. Even though it was a bar of soap, which there's many things that I'm gonna say right now that it fucked up with my skin, it was an unscented one. So once I got rid of that fragrance, I did start to see an improvement in my skin. So that's something I can say to anyone who uses any type of skincare, look at your skincare and see if it has fragrance. I know that's not a revolutionary idea at all. I can't believe I just learned that at 27, bitch. Where have I been? But oh my God, learning that has been such a game changer for me. And one thing that the bar of soap did really mess up with my skin, which I had no idea um, that it was doing that, is my moisture barrier. Your barrier is the outermost layer of the skin that provides protection to help retain water and moisture and defend against external irritants like bacteria and environmental debris from penetrating through and causing sensitive reactions. This isn't the only part of the skincare routine that really messed me up. There's a part that will get to later on that was definitely not good for my skin at all but this definitely over time i mean i used these bars of soap for years and years and years because like i said it was unscented and my skin wasn't acting out as much so i was super faithful to this fucking bar of soap for years bitch but now that i have established a healthier relationship with a new actual face cleanser i have realized that i have been slowly stripping away that moisture barrier and my skin was drier than ever even though i didn't get that squeaky feeling like it wasn't like i just washed my face with a fucking irish spring bar okay it didn't feel like that when you would use the dove bar it was definitely more gentle but like over time my skin was just drier and it was just not looking great and actually i I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, as I'm talking about my past products from videos, I'll just show you what I'm using now. So this is a new face wash that I am obsessed with. This face wash is so great. I learned about this through Hiram. He raves about this. This is the Kale and Green Tea Spinach Vitamin Superfood Cleanser from Youth to the People. This is so gentle, but it lathers. I cannot have a face wash that doesn't bubble up. Like I feel like it's not doing anything. This also takes off your makeup. Like it's not so gentle that it doesn't do anything. I feel like the set of and stuff I just can't get behind they're so gentle that they like don't feel like they're cleaning and then I'm like scrubbing my face like crazy this is gentle but it does the job like you feel like it's cleaning your skin I looked up the ingredients on this and it does have natural fragrance so there's no like added perfume fragrance I'm assuming it does not smell like a perfume fragrance whatsoever. It almost just smells like citrus. And when you look at the ingredients, it does have kale in it and all these veggies and you could almost smell that. Ever since I started using this, I think about a month ago, I wanna say, my flaky skin has gone away completely. But even before I started using this, I had stopped the bar of soap. I have realized for months that that was perhaps not my best idea. So before I was using this, I was using the Curology cleanser. I like that, it's gentle, but I like this even more. So this has been amazing. It's a little pricey. I think this was 30 something. Well, that's not that pricey. When you think of skincare, I feel like they sell things for like $100. But um, yeah, this is amazing. I love this. Much better than a bar of soap, I'll tell you that much. And the difference I saw was so insane. I couldn't believe how much I've been drying out my skin, but like in a subtle way over time. I didn't even realize it was happening. It just snuck up on me and now I have wrinkles. Okay, let's continue on with this god awful video. My roots were out of control. Bitch, there was no pandemic back then. You had no excuse to have those roots. Anyway, okay, here we go. Now I'm not claiming this is gonna work for everyone, but it really, really worked for me. I mean, it leaves my skin perfect. It's not too stripped of oil. It's not dry. Like it does not dry my skin out at all. I just wanna say, I didn't mean to lie. I wasn't lying to you guys. Like I genuinely felt like that was my truth. This whole dryness thing, it really happened gradually and over time. I wasn't lying on purpose is what I'm trying to say. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Let's get on to the next product that I use every night and sometimes, like I said, in the morning. This is the Coco Kind Organic Rose Water Facial Toner. Now, here's the thing about this and the next product that I'm gonna mention. Some people's skin really does not like rose. My skin just happens to love rose. Okay, here's the thing about the toner. That toner is not necessarily bad because it's literally just rose water. There was no added perfumes, nothing like that. And it was really, really gentle. However, I do not use that anymore. And the only reason I don't is because I truly have found that the more simple I keep my routine, the better my skin looks. I thought that this skincare routine that I did at the time was keeping it simple, but taking out the toner made it 
a lot better for me. It's easier, less money. I don't have to buy anything and my skin loves me for it. So honestly, try to just remove as much as you possibly can. Just wash your face, moisturize your face. That's pretty much all you need to start off with and sunscreen, of course. Anyway, we'll skip through the toner part, but I don't use that anymore. Don't use any toner whatsoever. If I have a pimple, let's say, and I pop it and it's a little bit inflamed, I wash my face with this, then I put this on, and then I put on the next product that I'm gonna tell you, and that's all I do. All right, Jesse. so when your skin's inflamed, you whip out the bar of soap you used to wash your ass with. That's your, that's your solution? My poor skin was just fighting for dear life, but you know what? She pulled through and I'm proud of her. So the next product that I'm showing is basically the last of this little trio. Like I honestly attribute my skin clearing up to these three products. This is the Fresh Rose Deep Hydration Face Cream. This is a fairly thick night cream, so I only use that at night. Like I said, my skin loves rose and I had a sample of this. I actually had two samples of this and I, I just fucking loved it. I felt like it really hydrated my skin and I don't know, I don't know what else to say other than I really like this. That being said, you do not have to get this. I think this is like $48. So this is the most expensive thing out of this whole trio, but I've heard that the Neutrogena Hydro Boost creams are really good. I actually want to try that when this runs out just to see how my skin reacts to it. Funny enough, that is what I currently use. So really quickly, I don't remember that cream at all. <laughs> it's been a couple years now. I despise creams now for my face. I love water gel formulas. So this is, grab it. that's kind of a really fucking gross way to show you. You see it right there? There you go. <laughs> this is a water gel consistency. So that basically means that this texture is gonna sink straight into your skin. Your skin just drinks up this texture. I feel like those white creams, they sit on top of your skin, they're super heavy. I'm not into that feeling at all. Now, a very important distinction. I have told multiple people in my life to buy this and half of them have bought the wrong one. <laughs> this is a Neutrogena Hydro Boost Gel Cream for extra dry skin. The one that is not the extra dry skin formula is formulated with fragrance. But honestly, um, I just really like this. It's very simple. It's not a crazy moisturizer that's gonna give you the most moisture you've ever had in your skin. But if I have a breakout or something, I would much rather put fragrance-free things on my skin. You know what I'm saying? Like some intense ass rose sprays and shit is not really it anymore. Okay, I don't know what she was thinking. So yeah, this is the moisturizer I use now. I find it funny that I mentioned that in my original video. So now that I've got like the main staples out of the way, I'm gonna get into like the little extras of skincare, which is like masks and exfoliators. So as an exfoliator, I only do this, I would say like twice a week. This is the Dermalogica Daily Microfoliant. Basically, it's like dry beads that you make into a paste on your hand and they're very, very fine. Some exfoliators are really, really intense, like really chunky and honestly like a little painful on your skin, even if you're doing it really gentle. Why was I pretending that I knew what the fuck I was talking about? Can someone explain that to me? So obviously I have learned, okay, I'm a better person now. I now know the damage that scrubs, even like that, even ones that are not as abrasive as fucking St. Ives, okay? Okay, but I might as well have recommended St. Ives. I now know the damage that that can cause. I now know that any sort of scrub that is a physical scrub that you can feel, like ones that you would use on your legs, you know, like actual scrubs, I know that that can cause little cuts on your skin that you will never see, but that over time really mess up your skin. I think that I threw that in there, honestly, because I always exfoliated with different things and I just felt like I needed to recommend an exfoliator. I still do believe in exfoliating, but only chemically now. You see this? This is called growth. This is the Ordinary's AHA 30%, BHA 2% healing solution. I use this probably once every two weeks. I honestly wait until my skin tells me when I need to use this. I don't do it on any sort of schedule. This is basically something that's going to chemically exfoliate your skin. You only wear it for 10 minutes and you put a very thin layer on. And this does a million times better of a job at exfoliating your skin, taking off that dead layer of skin and just making your skin look refreshed. And this is only like $10. The Ordinary is a brand that's very confusing. <laughs> like if you go on their website, good luck. I hope you're a chemist. They honestly are talking equations in their titles like I 
I do not understand what's happening there, but that's besides the point. I have seen a huge difference. When I feel like my skin is just like clogged or gross, a little bit of this, the next day I'm glowing, bitch, I swear. Anyway, point is, if you have an abrasive scrub, any type of scrub that you have to pour on your hands and start scrubbing your face, throw it in the trash right now. And for a mask, I usually use this True Organics detoxifying mask. This is a clay mask that comes in a powder and then you mix it with water and put it on your face. I have used this for years. Okay, so to me, I feel like this mask personally was my least controversial choice. Like I feel like the other things I recommended were far worse. I actually do have this mask still. I haven't used it in a long time. I no longer use clay masks. Like I don't reach for them. I realized that even when my skin is really struggling and I have a lot of just irritation, clay masks for my skin personally, I did realize that they were something that over time would contribute to the drying out of my skin, depending on how often Often I would do them and this is a, a nice mask people with oily skin might love that mask But just for me, I don't wear face masks at all anymore. This is my new little face mask I don't put masks on my skin. So that's pretty much it for the watching the video portion Those were all the products that I recommended <laughs> That was really embarrassing. However, I'm gonna let you know the rest of the products that I use on my face now. One product that I didn't mention because in my skincare routine, I was not using anything like this is the Ordinary Hyaluronic Acid Serum. I use this every night before my moisturizer and I really enjoy it. I think that it's added some more moisture and plumpness to my skin. However, this is definitely not a necessity, but if you wanna experiment with hyaluronic acid, this is like $7 and it's a really, really good one. And then, like I said, I put on my moisturizer and I then put on the one thing that I'm like, oh, Oh my god, how did I not discover this sooner? And that's the CeraVe. Is that how you say it? CeraVe? Cerav? CeraVe? Healing ointment. This is essentially just petroleum jelly. Petroleum jelly, if you're not aware, is Vaseline. So if you have Vaseline, you could use that too. I personally like this a little bit more than Vaseline. I don't know why. The only thing that I use this for is for dry patches on my skin. So my nose was flaking up. You know, the weather's changing here in Georgia. Like it was just starting to get really, really scaly here in my nose. Ever since I started using this on any sort of dry patch, my skin has honestly been so much more hydrated and just looks so much more glowy and healthy. If you have any dry patches on your skin, try this out on it for a couple of days and you will see that that area is now more hydrated and then you don't have the dry patches anymore. And then the last thing that I'm going to update you on as far as things that I think have improved the overall health of my skin, because it's not like I was breaking out horribly in this video, but just my, I feel like my skin's healthier now, is I stopped using makeup wipes. I, at that time, was still using makeup wipes, you know, to initially take off some makeup and then I would wash my face. I no longer use makeup wipes whatsoever. I moved on to bigger and better things. I now use a makeup eraser. As you can see, this is a used one. Gross. But makeup erasers are an amazing option. They tug at your skin a little bit. Gotta be very gentle. And you might want to avoid the eye area with this. But I do my eyeshadow. I just don't try to like scrub off my eyeliner with this. This has been amazing for taking off my makeup without like stripping it of everything. Because all this needs is water. And then the other thing I use is just micellar water. Not even this particular brand, Bioderma. I use that with a reusable cotton pad. And I just take off my makeup like that and then I wash my face. It has been way better in not stripping my skin and I'm telling you guys, I do feel like the oil is coming back to my face. I don't know if you could tell, I'm low key kind of greasy right now. The natural oils in my face, it's not just like a dewy setting mist or something. Like I've had on my makeup for a few hours so my oils are starting to come in and before my skin was just too dry for that shit. Like honestly, She's back, baby. Maybe I'm going crazy, but I swear I have repaired my moisture barrier. I still don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Don't listen to... <laughs> Don't listen to anything I'm saying. But anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was super random, but I wanted to tell you guys what I'm using now for my skincare while simultaneously shaming my past self. Let me know in the comments down below if you tried out anything that I... Uh recommended in the past. Have you guys tried any of these products that I'm using now? Let me know what you think about them. But yeah, that's it. I love you guys very much and I really appreciate you watching. Please subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you next time. Bye.